Hello guys, welcome to another episode of CUDA Education. Today we are going to talk about CUDA graphs. Now CUDA graphs are a feature introduced by NVIDIA in order to make your application faster. So CUDA is the proprietary GPU programming language of NVIDIA. So if you want to do parallel processing, if you want to make your application faster, uh, the, the world and everyone is moving to processing on the GPU because you could do things simultaneously, you could do things in parallel, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So in the world of, of CUDA coding or parallel processing, you have, um, you have two worlds that you have to manage. You have the CPU side, also called the host side, and you have the GPU side, also called the device side. And what happens is that the kernel launch is initialized and all that stuff on the CPU side. And then it actually happens on the GPU side. So whatever big processing you have to do, it, 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 it takes place on the GPU side. But this, this thing right here is represents time cost. So in order for you to initialize, set up, prepare, all that stuff, it, there's, a, there's a certain amount of latency, a certain amount of time that it takes the CPU to initialize a kernel launch on the GPU. And um, if it's just one launch, it's, it's not too bad, depending on how, how, how time consuming and complex your actual uh, parallel processing is. This time cost, you know, it, it can it can be a significant portion of of your the total time your application takes to, to finish. The problem comes in when you don't have one kernel launch, but you have times a thousand kernel launches that you have to do in your application. So you're sending a thousand uh initialization overhead blah 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 requests to get the gpu to process these thousands well all of these represent a time cost right this is time cost time cost okay so now a significant portion of your application is basically just communicating between the cpu and gpu that you have to launch all these kernels and if you ever use um Insight Compute or any of the profiling tools pro provided by NVIDIA. Um, I think I think for for GPU processing, it's uh, Insight Compute. If you ever uh, if you ever profile any of these applications, especially if you're doing a lot of launches, this right here takes up a lot of your time, right? Because you're 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 launching um, and you know every everything is an initialization, right? So what the NVIDIA gods have come up with is to say, hey, you know what? Instead of going back and forth and launching these thousands independently every time, just outline to me, outline to me what it is you want to do. What, what, is, what is it that your application wants to do? So you might say, okay, I'm gonna launch kernel launches, times a thousand and maybe there might be some conditional statements some if statements whatever 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 etc etc right and you declare in your code and in my case it's a CUDA C code hey I'm gonna launch a thousand kernels and this is what I have to do this is what I have to do um, and, and the, these are the the you know whatever operations I need to do well what CUDA graphs allows you to do is number one, declare all the operations that you want to do. So in the background, once it's it it it, it after compile time and ready for runtime, there are certain optimizations can be done because they know they're probably gonna have to do a thousand launches. But number two, this only happens once. So so when you have to do any additional kernel launch, you're only doing this time cost 
equation once. And and since 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 this cost isn't repeating as much, you get a more efficient algorithm. And that's that's structurally, in my opinion, what what CUDA graphs is is trying to achieve. It's 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 trying to cut down the the um, initialization overhead, the launching overhead for each and every kernel launch that you want to do. It's saying, okay, I know I want to do this. Okay, then, you know, just launch it one time and then you could accomplish the thousand that you need to do. Now, there might be certain situations where you might have to come back to the, the, the CPU with a result and then do another 2000 kernel launches, right? Right, so then now you might have to do another, you know, this would be a time cost again. You might have to do another um, situation with this, but that's, that's not a problem because you're not doing 2000s of these, you're just doing one of them for these 2000s. So there are certain um, considerations that you have to take into account, you know, with with the CUDA graph system but uh from what i understand this feature is actually very efficient um it really cuts down on the the overhead for or the time cost for your applications especially if it's if you're launching many kernels and um you know and and you needed to to go back and forth between the, the cpu and gpu just as a general note, you always want to cut down the amount of communication between the CPU and GPU because, you know, not only not only are you doing it, but you also have to consider memory, you have memory considerations and all that stuff. So, the less of the less times you have to cross this barrier, generally speaking, the better. So that that's my take on 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 what CUDA graphs is trying to achieve. Okay, and in the tutorial that I have below, I um. I, I discuss how to actually um, <clears throat> do it. So let me just give you an overview on what the actual methods that uh, you could you could get. Actually, I won't even bother with this anymore. What what are the ways that you could implement CUDA graphs? There there are two there are two main ways. One is called stream capture. And all stream capture is, is uh, it, all things in CUDA are sort of achieved through a stream. So you want to, um, whether you're just doing a simple kernel launch or a simple application, there's a default stream and then there's a bunch of other streams. What stream capture does is it just, it just says start capture. all of your operations that you're doing and then end capture and what what this does is it basically records all the things that all the operations that you're doing and then puts that in a graph so that you could repeat you could repeat this if you want or you could do whatever else you want to do but th the second time or third time or fourth time you repeat it you won't have the initialization and overhead that you 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 have the first time around because you you have recorded it and you have told CUDA hey this is what I'm gonna do and when you repeat it you could uh you know it, it's it's faster right so there's a certain amount of efficiency that that sh that comes with that. The second way is explicit API. So explicit API is like you're not you're not necessarily, you know, just just putting a, a start and end point to your application and saying, hey, CUDA, I want to, you know, I want you to record record all this activity and I want you to, you know, optimize it so when I ask for it, ask to do it again, it's faster. Explicit API is you're actually building out the graph model explicitly. So you're saying, hey, these kernels over here, I want it to be treated this way. 
you know, and, and treat it as a node. So this is a node. And then if that happens, you could either go to this node or that node and blah, blah, blah. It's, 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 it's definitely more typing. It's more involved. Uh, but you could sort of, you know, craft, craft your, 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 your graphs to do exactly what it is you want to do. And also you could sort of, you have the opportunity to manage synchronization a little better. Um, I don't want to get too much into it because it's uh, it's better left to the resources on the internet and 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 um, other discussions on the internet. I can't necessarily cover it here in this video, but the explicit explicit API gives you a better um, it's sort of like ground level granular way of 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 sort of taking full advantage of the CUDA graphs, um, which maybe it's not as easy to do if you're just doing st stream capture. Now, the thing is that you could maybe string these captures together and, and all of that and, and, and do other things. But again, this is beyond the scope of this video. Um, the reason why NVIDIA in introduced stream capture is because they wanted to make legacy code easier to take advantage of CUDA graphs. So let me repeat. You probably have some legacy code from a couple years ago that have been launching kernels and 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 you know doing a bunch of operations. And maybe you have some new employee that that comes in comes on the scene, and they need to, um, you know, they they want to take advantage of the latest and greatest from Nvidia to make their application faster. They're not necessarily interested in buying new hardware or anything like that. They want to use this CUDA grass feature to make their application faster. Well, if you want to do that, you could just implement the start and end capture within the legacy code and then, you know, do, do a couple of the things and basically, you know, save the capture or save, save this graph so that when you're doing it in subsequent parts of your application, that it's, it's faster. And you get you get time savings because of that. So that's my take on CUDA graphs. Um, <clears throat> I do have a tutorial in the description below that uh, walks you through how to actually program uh, CUDA graphs um, on a Windows-based machine. My my setup basically is a is a a, a, a GeForce 1050 Ti graphics card um, on a Windows operating system. Visual Studio 2017 Community Edition Core i5, Intel Core i5 processor. But um, it will show you how to do stream capture and it will show you how to do explicit API um, in CUDA. And it's a very basic, simple introduction. And of course, you know, once you once you learn how to do that, then you could start getting into, you know, all the different nodes, and and all, all, all the different fancy stuff that you can do. And and even since I've made that video, they have come out with other features, um, enhanced features for you to 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 make it even better. Uh, there are a lot of variables here that that you could you could um, you know check the status of you know, check status of, you could check the status of capture. So, you know, there's a variable that you could use to find out is what I'm doing right now actually being captured. Um, you know, so you, maybe it might be a sanity check for your for your code to know that, okay, you asked for a capture and it, it actually is capturing. So anyway, that's, that's my take on CUDA graphs. Um, I don't think it's a feature that has gotten a lot of traction but I, I i really do feel it's a valuable feature and it's an easy way for new if 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 you're in high performance computing if you are um working with cuda and you want to impress impress your boss impress your superiors um you want to you want to get you know get get your applications running faster or or even just take advantage of your hardware that you already have and make it faster, this CUDA graph system is, is a great way to do it. Um, always be mindful if you're, if you're rehashing legacy code, code, 
always be mindful um, to check the results to make sure that the CUDA graphs version of your algorithm matches the legacy version in terms of the result or, or whatever whatever end goal you're trying to achieve so it's all well and good to make it fast but if if um the synchronization is off or if you missed some calculations and and you know the the, the result is wrong then you're gonna find yourself in trouble so there's work to be done but um i do think cuda graphs is an efficient way for you to to, to, to make better, make your algorithm more efficient. Anyway, check the description below. The, the tutorial is for sale on Amazon Kindle. Um, and definitely check out kudaeducation.com. Remember to subscribe to the channel. I'll be trying to produce more of these videos that talk about parallel processing, computer graphics, and anything else that, that uh, I think is useful to the community. Thank you for watching. Tell your friends. Have a great day.